You know, it was an indecisive session until just about an hour ago. Now almost all the sectors are up, but energy is leading the way. Crude oil breaking out just a little bit. Meanwhile, tech, it got a nice boost from Microsoft. They announced an 11% increase in their dividend. Also a fresh $60 billion buyback plan. Both, of course, music to the ears of my next guest, the CIO of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. And David, okay, I know you, you write a weekly letter on the markets and other things called the Dividend Cafe. So that tells me where you stand on that topic. But my question is what would happen to the stock market if the Democrats were able to get through, and I know in the Senate side they've already done it, a tax on buybacks? Because I think that's an important underpinning for this rally. Oh, I do as well. I don't think it has a chance of getting approved, but I think the fact that it's even being proposed as policy is frightening and gives you an indication of, of how they think about capital markets. Um, what's ironic, Charles, as you know, is that for a dividend growth guy like me, you would think I want them to go tax stock buybacks because it will force more companies away from buying back stock and into growing their dividend more and would be a boost to the side of the market I invest in. But I will never, my dad did not raise me to have the integrity to want bad policy to benefit myself, okay? The fact of the matter is that a tax on stock buybacks is a tax on capital markets and it's a distortion. It's the government putting their finger on the scale of how they want companies allocating capital and resources. I don't need the government to say who should do buybacks, who should do dividends, who should reduce debt. Companies in the private sector operating in their self-interest ought to be making those decisions, not Congress. I want to talk to you about some news that came out yesterday. Uh, we learned a number of Americans living uh, uh, above uh, the poverty line or under the poverty line, rather, declined. Uh, now, that's if you add in government checks. Now, if you just go on cash payments, 2019 still the record low in terms of poverty. And I think this gets to the heart, David, of the battle of the heart and soul of our nation. Big government and high taxes where the government sends out checks or small government, low taxes, where we can grab the brass ring ourselves. I, I mean, this is where it is, isn't it? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the way you phrase it's really important. The high taxes and big government are not two things. It's one thing. And smaller government and lower taxes are not two things. It's one thing. The taxes just follow the size of government. So the question is what size government we want to have in the economy. Do we reduce poverty more with a working country? Do we reduce poverty more and produce more human dignity by an aspirational society? Or do we want a government that can become a source of cradle to grave support for a lot of people, which I argue is not just economically impoverishing, but spiritually impoverishing. And so this is a debate about the nature of the country we want to have. And ultimately, we want poverty going down because we want people enriched and they get enriched by the opportunity society that guys like Charles Payne have lived out personally. <laughs> If I had my tambourine, my man, I'd be playing it right now. I've got less than a minute to go. Crude oil breaking out. Uh, inventory drawdowns are happening. I, I, you know, I just had this conversation right in the last segment. It seems to me that these oil stocks, David, should be a whole lot higher than they are now. Can they go there? They can. It's just all multiple. The PEs are real low, even as those cash flows are growing. Their capital discipline has been very strong. A lot of companies have substantially delevered and de-risked their balance sheets. Um, you do not need oil prices at 80 or 90. Anything above 55 to 75 is a great sweet spot. They're in the higher end of that number now. Um, and all the talk about the greenies and all the ESG and pension funds boycotting them, it's irrelevant. At some point, value gets discovered in the market. I just hope it's listeners to your show getting that value because I know it's going to be some hedge funds at some point in time. All right, and I caught the sweet spot. I know, no, no pun intended. Always appreciate our conversations. David Bonson, thank you so much.